times of war, exhausted by the everlasting bitterness between men. On that September day of 1945, I thought, would there ever be a true peace, a peace when walls between nations would fall, men would be in conflict only against poverty and illness and the word unhappiness would be stricken forever from the human heart? It started out as a wonderful day. All over the world, the weather was unbelievably perfect. Where it was daylight, it was the clearest, bluest daylight in the memory of mankind. Where it was night, the sky was cloudless, and the moon and the stars gave light bright almost beyond belief. And as all mankind shared the blessings of perfect weather, so also they shared a common, all-encompassing interest. For on this day, men of all nations grouped around their radios and televisors, watching and listening to an epical event which was taking place in the great council hall of Geneva. Yes, epical indeed was this meeting, for in the great vaulted chamber sat a thousand men of many tongues and many colors, of many temperaments, many ideologies, the chosen representatives of their nations, come together in council to meet and discuss a cause close to the heart of every man. And as each representative rose and spoke, from Tokyo to Melbourne, from Cape Town to Moscow, from Santiago to Nome, the ears and the eyes and the hearts of all mankind were with them. Black men. White men. Yellow men. Brown men. Red men. Listening and hoping. Indo-European. Arab and Berber. Mongolian. Malayan and Polynesian. American Indian. Dravidian. African. Australian and Papuan. Hoping and listening. Protestant, Roman Catholic, Jew and Mohammedan, Confucian and Buddhist, Orthodox Catholic, Brahmin and heathen. All of them listening and hoping. The next speaker, Signor Arati. Citizens of the world, I salute you. In the name of my people, I salute you. This is a great day. This is a day when the strong heart is glad. This is a day when the strong heart is sick. For well, today, for the first time in the history of the world, all men become like a blood of rules. <laughs> As a representative of my government, I bring you most cordial greetings and felicitations. This is indeed an historical movement, this joining together of all the races of mankind for the common good. Great was the moment when the Magna Carta was signed, as great indeed were the moments when the various constitutions were signed. But I say to you that this indeed is the greatest of moments. This moment of submersion of nationalistic ambition for the international good. My country for years has fought many wars. Our ancestors thought some of them righteous. But we of this more enlightened time renounce this shame forever. And we thrust behind us forever the imperialistic ambitions which have cost us the blood of our youth for so many centuries. Yes, from this moment henceforward, we give our empire to the world. Attention, 
please, the next speaker, Prince Matui. Honorable friends, we are a small nation, yet our influence has been felt throughout the world. But this influence, unfortunately, has been aggressive. Today, I am happy to say, all that is ended. We renounce the era of our fathers. We renounce belief that our island is the seat of godliness, and we join in this great idea that all men are of God, and all men are one, and all men can live as one in brotherhood and happiness. Kansai. <laughs> Another representative of a great people, Monsieur Reynac. Messieurs et dames, I speak for a nation. Many have said this is a momentous occasion, but perhaps to no nation is it a greater occasion than it is to mine, which for many centuries has sat behind great barriers repelling invaders of our sovereignty. But today we strike down these barriers with our own hands and we throw wide our arms and say to you, we are your brothers. We, a nation of individualists, a nation that is known hatred, turns from individualism and hatred to solidarity and love with all mankind. In the name of my nation, I salute the fraternity of mankind. representative of a great democracy. My friends, I stand here before you alone, and yet I assure you 120 million of my countrymen are with me here in spirit. For many years, our national policy has been to mind our own business and to keep our powder dry. That was an excellent policy when nations were at each other's throats. But today, I stand here to tell you that we have renounced this policy. We have renounced it because we have outgrown such beliefs, even as nations have outgrown the belief that the only manner in which to settle disputes is by force. As a mature people, we reach out beyond the oceans which surround us and say to all of you, we are as you, you are as we, we are as one. We join in this great international movement without fear, without reservation. United we stand, all of us, forever. <laughs> on this historic document, a closing word by the representative of another great people, Held Gambling. Viva Schaff, Brotherhood is a noble work. I now bring you this work as a representative of my people. For many years, my people have walked as one, perhaps bowed ahead as one, regimented in the belief that we must work together, would believe together. Some of the things we have believed, I stand here to tell you, have been false. It has taken many years of leadership, but now we know they are false. There is in the blood no right of leadership. Leadership is not in the blood. It is in the heart and the minds. This day we turn our blood into the great bloodstream of all mankind. White, yellow, black, the blood is the same. Christian, Jew, or heathen, the blood is the same. All our brothers who today all stand together in peace forever! Peace forever!
been in session many days. All of us are weary and anxious, I am certain, to return to our native home. So now, let us, without further delay, turn to our final task, the happy one of ratifying this great international treaty which forevermore removes all barriers between nations, which makes of us the united nations of the world, joined together for all eternity in common brotherhood, in everlasting peace. Our vote will be by acclamation. All those in favor of this great covenant will rise. <laughs> And that was the day the sun exploded. Thanks and yours to Ingrid Bergman, B. Benedict, Jimmy Cagney, Betty Davis, Olivia de Havilland, Catherine Hepburn, Elliot Lewis, Raymond Massey, Mercedes McCambridge, Paul Muni, Lloyd Nolan, Alfred Ryder, Norma Shearer, Jimmy Stewart, and to the many, many other actors, and to Marty Halpern and the scores of other technicians who made these records possible. A low bow to the musical Gordon Jenkins. In saying goodbye to you, may I give you one last thought. It is this. For the sake of our children and the world's children, remember... (laughs) 